Okay, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Moraine Valley Library. Thank you for coming. It's good to see so many students here. Uh, my name is Troy Swanson. I'm the library department chair. And, um, you know, we are very um, happy to be working with the Arab Student Union to make this space available to share um, this traveling exhibit. Um, I think those of us here at Moraine Valley take the word community really serious in our name and that we want to reflect and connect to the larger community that we serve. And locally on campus, um, you know, if we are a learning community, learning needs to happen not just in classrooms where we're hidden away um, behind closed doors, but in public where we can come together and talk and share ideas. And, and I think our library likes to think at least that we play a role in that, a space where you may accidentally walk in and learn something new that you didn't know that you were gonna ask or, or see, or ask questions that you hadn't thought of. So um, we are very um, honored to play that role. And I wanna say thank you to Nina and thank you for the students um, from ASU for making this possible. So, and welcome. Um, it's my honor to introduce Abdullah uh, Shuli from ASU. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abdullah Shuli, and I'm former president and now an active member of the Arab Student Union here at Moraine Valley Community College. The ASU has been around Moraine Valley Community College for over two decades and is one of the most active clubs on campus. We are involved in many fundraisers and events on and off campus year round. Some of these events we have been able to proud, we have proud to be able to host include informative sessions and topics on crises in the Middle East and other countries within the Middle East such as the Syrian refugee crisis, film events such with the Chicago Palestinian Film Festival, Arab cultural performances, and many other community activities. Two events that the ASU has been very proud to uh, host on its college campus include the co-sponsoring of the Palestinians Run for Peace by Team Palestine for the Palestinian Children Relief Fund. This consisted of a 5K run or a one mile walk around the college campus with all proceeds of the race going to the PCRF to help build medical facilities and pay for children's procedures in Palestine and around the Middle East. Another event which we are very extremely proud to host is the Arab American Student Scholarship event. This scholarship was started within the ASU in order to help students complete their education. For two years now, we have been able to raise nearly $10,000, an impressive amount if you ask me, and we are continuing to raise funds and donations from the community. The scholarship is an example of our hard work and a goal to make education possible to any student. For that reason, we strive to keep it active. So as you can see, we have done a pretty good job in keeping the community informed on events on the Middle East, as well as striving to do our share in building a better tomorrow with high hopes. But now I'd like, you tell, I'd like to tell you more about myself and why this event in particular is something we are so proud to have on campus. I am an international student meaning I've lived in countries outside of the US. Those countries include Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. It has been such, it has been such a wonderful opportunity for me to experience the life of an Arab outside of the United States, but this opportunity came with a very bold truth. Arabs are stereotyped in America. We would like to take a deeper look at these stereotypes and a more detailed look at how Western media portrays the Arab community and how this affects the way Arabs in the community are. For this reason, the Arab Student Union continues to work hard in its effort to get our voice heard and more importantly, defy the stereotype. The A for Arab exhibit includes images from the Jack Shaheen archive focusing on the portrayal of Arabs and, popular and Muslims in popular US culture. With that being said, I'd like to welcome you all to this wonderful event. And now I'd like to introduce my advisor and the advisor of the Arab Student Union, Nina Shoman Dijani. To provide you with some background knowledge of the Amer Arab American community in the United States, I'd like to introduce Nina, um, Nina Shoman Dijani's previous uh, accomplishments in her life. She received a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology with a minor in Middle Eastern Studies and her Master of Arts in International Affairs with a focus on US foreign and domestic policy from California State University, Sacramento. Currently, Nina holds the position of Manager of Transition and English as a Second Language here at Marine Valley Community College. In addition, Nina has taught classes on various subjects at Marine, including history of the Middle East, and is also an adjunct professor at St. Xavier University, where she teaches courses for the Middle Eastern Student Studies Program. Nina has served as the advisor to the Arab Student Union at Marine Valley for six years, and also assists on various committees at the college. Nina is currently pr pursuing her Doctor of Education degree at Benedictine and 
and higher education and organizational change and is writing her dissertation on the racial identity construction of Arab American college students. With that being said, I'd like to welcome up here Nina Shoman Dajani. Thank you very much, Abdullah. Can everybody hear me? Mic's up this way. Um, I appreciate the uh, warm welcome from the audience, and um, I want to give you an extra round of applause for coming up here and being so brave and so eloquent um, as an Arab American student. You make me very proud um, to see you in front of this audience, and I know that you make your fellow ASU members very proud um, when you represent them. And I do want to first give um, credit to the students who have um, launched this exhibit, who have raised the funds for this exhibit, um, and this event really would not have been possible without them. So you see some of the students around with the green t-shirts, um, the Arab Student Union t-shirts. Those are just a handful of our active Arab Student Union members. Um, many of them are actually um, in class right now as well. But on your way out, if you get a chance, engage them in conversation, thank them for bringing this exhibit, and please stop by the Arab Student Union table where they have literature and information um, about the Arab American community and about the Arab world, and also um, some books for sale as well. I want to first start by sharing with you a quote by a very popular Arab American professor at University of Michigan named Evelyn El Sultani. She stated, the harmful influences of stereotypes depend not only on the repetition of distorted imagery, but also the omission of diverse imagery. What is absent in the American popular culture, in American popular culture, are the important images of Arabs and Arab Americans, who are business owners, family members, teachers, classmates, artists, engineers, neighbors, and who have made lasting contributions to society. As an Arab American myself, I honestly know this very well. When I turn on the news or watch certain movies, it's um, seldom that I see the Arab American community portrayed um, in a positive light. And I know some of my colleagues that are here as well and our fellow students who are also of Arab descent can relate to that. However, I am encouraged by events like today where we witness a student organization bring light to these stereotypes and to educate their peers and their professors in our community about the dangerous stereotypes of Arabs and the Muslims, Muslim community in the media. As Arab Americans, we know that there is much work to be done, but dialogue like this event today, at events like this one today, are a start to creating um, a good, positive, lasting impression on our community about Arabs and Muslims. Our students are very proud of the exhibit, but I have to be honest, we wouldn't be able to host this exhibit without having a space. And um, as soon as we approached Troy and Tara about the idea to host this exhibit in the library, they were very supportive. And we've been working on this for several months. Um, and from lots of emails going back and forth between myself and NYU and Troy and Tara and Joe Malarkey and um, all of the great folks here in the library. Um, we were able to host this exhibit together and I just want to publicly thank you for allowing us to use this space and for being so supportive. Um, there's other events during the month that are also going to be hosted in the library, um, including an upcoming event um, where we are featuring two um, authors, graphic novelists Leila Abdur Razik and Tofiq El Rasi. And the bookstore is here with their books as well, if you're interested in purchasing their books. That is on November 17th, um, same um, time, same place right here. Um, and you're all welcome to come to that as well. Also, we have a talk back on November 19th, um, which is titled Examining Education Under Israeli Occupation. And it's an opportunity for students to dialogue with a group of our students to dialogue with a group of students at Bir Zayt University in Palestine. It will be held in D116 at 8 a.m. Um, Suzanne um, El Nasser is here today, um, who will be able to tell you a little bit more in detail about that event if you're interested in coming. Um, but she's opening it up to students and staff and um, faculty that are interested um, in coming. And I know that it's been a, a long project as well that you've been planning. So we're excited about that too. 
I want to tell you a little bit about the Arab American community. We have an extended version of this presentation um, tonight at 6.30, and we're, we're also going to have some refreshments. So if you're still on campus, you're all welcome to come as well. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about who the Arab American community is, where Arabs come from. Some of you may already be familiar with this knowledge. Um, for others, it may be a refresher, and for some of you, it may be new. Um, and so I wanted to tell you that if you weren't already aware, Arabs, when we use that term, actually it's a very broad term. It um, encompasses people from 22 different countries. Some of these countries in North Africa, um, you may not even be aware, were Arab countries. The common language that is spoken um, among all Arabs is Arabic. But of course, like many other languages, there is various dialects and terminology that varies. Um, and there's cultural traditions that may be in common throughout the Arab world, but there's many cultural traditions that vary depending on what country you're in. Um, if you're in Algeria or Palestine or Syria, you may find different cultural traditions and norms um, that you wouldn't find in other neighboring countries. Um, so it's important to note that the Arab world is extremely diverse. And when we use the term Arab American, it may mean that um, Arab Americans may be uh, Muslim, they may be Christian, they may be first generation, second generation. They may speak Arabic or they may not. Uh, so again, I just want to put it out there that when we say Arab, it's a very diverse term. Um, the waves of immigration from the Arab world started um, many decades ago. In the late, uh, late 1800s and early 1900s, we saw the first waves of Arab immigrants coming from um, Lebanon and um, Syria. They were predominantly Christian. Here you can see a photo um, of the students of the Syrian unity um, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So who knew that in 1936 there was a sizable Syrian American community in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Then we saw what we call the second wave of Arab Americans come, or Arabs coming to the U.S. to become Arab Americans um, in the 1950s and 1960s. And then the third wave is what we would consider the 1970s to present. Contrary to popular belief, Arab Americans actually, um, you can come on, Mary, bring your students over. There's some chairs. Come on in. Um, if you're sitting on the ends, if you don't mind, kind of scooting in to make it easy for the class that just arrived to, to join us. Not a problem. Appreciate it. I'll give you a minute to get. No problem. You haven't missed much. <laughs> come on in. Thank you for coming. So yes, contrary to popular belief, the majority of Arab Americans in this country are not Muslim. Um, there's many times the assumption that Arabs are, are all Muslim, and that's not true. Actually, the majority of Arabs in this country are um, Christian. And you can see kind of the breakdown here, um, Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Protestant, and the, the um, yellowish orange square is, is Muslim. Um, and this information comes from the Zohabi International Poll. And there's lots of resources online, good resources that we can share with you. If you stop by our table, we have some websites if you want more detailed information about this. So defying stereotypes. We've established and we know that there are stereotypes about Arabs and Muslims in the United States um, and probably in many other parts of the world, just as there are stereotypes of many other ethnic, racial groups, and many other diverse communities in general. Um, but we're seeing that the Arab American community is resisting what popular stereotypes that you see in the media and in the movies. You're, um, the Arab American community is doing this through writing, through artwork, through education, and many different avenues. Um, there is a site I want to share with you. Abdullah is going to come up and help me navigate that. It's called hashtag I am Arab American, and it's a project that was put together by the Arab American um, Institute. And if you go to Facebook or if you just Google um, the Arab American Institute, I am Arab, and we're going to bring it up in just a sec, <laughs> you can see some of these positive images that are being promoted about the Arab American community. Um, hashtag I am Arab American is just one of the many um, positive um, sources out there that you can see. If you, again, you can view this online without even logging into Facebook, and we want to share the stories of a few of these people that are featured in hashtag I am Arab American. Okay, so what Janine Kutub, architect from Washington District of Columbia says is, first they asked her, what interests you about your field or of study or career? 
She said, at the moment, I am invested in the design of schools for disenfranchised communities in the greater DC area. I first became passionate about learning environments at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is also known as MIT, where I completed my master's thesis on schools in the occupied Palestinian territories. Another, someone else says, and of course they asked her, what stands out to you so far in life as being your biggest struggle? And her name was, her name was Jumana Qadur. She is the co-founder of Syria Relief and Development in Washington, District of Columbia. She said, as the coldest of six children, as the oldest of six children in an immigrant family, I have had to experience situations that my parents had never encountered before, challenges that high school students face about fitting in. The difficulty of applying for college and navigating without and navigating cultural expectations, American and Syrian, while still being able to land, balanced on two feet, has not been easy for me and others from my generation. But it is our hope, but it is our hope that future Arab American generations will find it easier to navigate these critical life stages as a result. And another person says, and his name was Chris Hassan Frankie. He's an owner and mixologist at the Green Zone, Washington District of Columbia. They've asked him, what have you accomplished this year? He said, this year, I'm proud to say that I've brought Arab hospitality, as I know it, to a wider audience and, ha and been recognized for it. Diafa is one of the defining features of Arab culture, and I'd venture to say it's the best one. But our legendary hospitality is not so widely known in the West. When I run my bar, I want everyone to feel as if they've come to my house and received full Arab treatment with generosity, friendliness, and making everyone feel special and honored. As the Arab saying goes, nawart al bayt, and that's how I want everyone to feel. Extending this hospitality is my primary goal, and this year I have expanded it. I have expanded it, and I've reached more people, and it means the world to me. Thank you. And again, you can go on and read more stories on hashtag I am Arab American, or you can visit the Arab American Institute for more detailed information. Um, if you're interested about the Arab um, community, they put out some really great resources. And um, we have, again, an extended presentation tonight if you're more interested in learning about how the Arab American community is counted and the US Census information. And I encourage you to come to that as well. We have a video clip that we're going to show you that really introduces how this exhibit came about and who Jack Shaheen is. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to thank the library once again. I also want to thank the Diversity Task Group, the Arab American um, Heritage Month Committee, Arab Heritage Month Committee, um, Student Life, Multicultural Student Affairs for their support throughout this month. Um, and again, just Moraine Valley um, for allowing us to create a space um, where we have this type of dialogue. Um, to the professors that brought, brought their students today, um, Manan, Mary, and Maha, thank you so much for bringing your students. And I'm going to ask um, Abdullah to come up and um, tell you a little bit about who Jack Shaheen is. And this archive and this display here wouldn't be here without Jack Shaheen. So it's important that you know a little bit about him. And then we're going to show the video clip. So once again, this exhibit would not be here without decades of work by Jack Shaheen. We have a short video which explains the importance of the exhibit featuring Jack Shaheen, but it's really important to tell you a little bit about who he is. Born in 1935 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Dr. Jack G. Shaheen has dedicated to his career to identifying and contesting damaging stereotypes of Arabs and Muslims in American media. He has also connected their development to the portrayals of other marginalized groups, including Jews, Native Americans, Asian Americans, Latinos, and African Americans. His research analyzes the origins of these visual caricatures and explains their stubborn persistence, reveals their very real ramifications for innocent people, and presents solutions to counter them effectively. A professor, author, and a professional consultant for films such as Syriana and Three Kings, Shaheen, with the help of his wife Bernice Shaheen, collected and analyzed materials which depicted Arabs and Muslims as the godless cultural other. The Jack G. Shaheen archive now contains nearly 3,000 motion pictures spanning from late 19th century, century silent films to contemporary Hollywood productions and television programs including car comedies, dramas, cartoons, and as well as commercials on DVDs and VHS tapes. Shaheen is the author of several books including The TV Arab in 1984, Guilty, which is Hollywood's verdict on Arabs after 9-11, produced in 2008, and the award-winning Real Bad Arabs, which is how Hollywood vil vilifies people from 2000, 2001 and 2009, 
which the Media Education Foundation produced as a documentary in 2006. Shaheen is currently a distinguished visiting scholar at New York University's Asian slash Pacific slash American Institute and the Hagop Kevorkian Center, I hope I read this right, for Near Eastern Studies. He is the recipient of two Fulbright Teaching Awards, the University of Pennsylvania's Janet Lee Stevens Award and the Arab, Ameri the Arab American Anti-Discrimination Committee's Lifetime Achievement Award, the Archangel Michael, the Archangel Michael Award from the Greek Orthodox Church, and the Panko B Award, Pancho B Award. His extensive collection provides valuable documentation of the representations of Arabs and Muslims in the U.S. popular culture and mass media from the late 19th to the 21st century. and then actually catch the end of the, the, the video. So, and again, you'll have another chance tonight. Um, uh, before I, I make a few more comments and invite you to walk around and look at the exhibit, does anybody have any comments or questions or something that they want to share with the audience or anyone? Yeah, Mary. Now, as a kid, I never questioned it, but looking back on it now, the film, which I, and I love the film, it's very offensive. Mm -hmm. Or that you would have, you know, Anthony Quinn playing an Arab who was Mexican, and maybe one can say that doesn't matter. Maybe it, maybe the actor can transcend the the race or whatever it may be, the ethnicity. But it just seems like there there is some progress being made. It seems like there's some efforts being made in television now to not be er as stereotypical. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if, if maybe other members of the audience agree, or if, if my, my my viewpoint is uh, mm -hmm. in the minority. Good question. Thoughts, comments, any responses? Thank you for sharing. Um, getting some props from your students. Anyone else, comments? Do you feel like it's getting better? Anyone? You know, there's some that may agree that it is getting better and others may not. Um, yes. I feel that it's it's now becoming a uh, known uh, not only in the Arabic community that now like it's starting to branch out kind of like what happened well what's still going on with uh, like Black Lives Matter. There's other organizations like that, but in the Arabic community that's popping up, and so they're making their voices more well known. Movie wise, um, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to be seeing dramatic changes where uh, the Arabic community won't be brought into a bad light mm -hmm. not until we get into the next conflict. Thank you for sharing. Um, you know, some of the images that you see in through the video clip or that you may see on the panels might make you think a little bit harder about some of the images that you've already viewed in videos, movies, in the media, and that you will see. Sometimes we don't realize when the stereotypes are being portrayed. Um, I know Aladdin may be a childhood favorite for some. But again, to the Arab community, there are portrayals of Arabs in, in the film that are very negative and, and mean totally different things than it might mean to, to others. Um, and there's you know, network television. There's different series that are playing now that don't always portray Arabs um, in a positive light. But as Jack Shaheen said, there are some positive films being made and more books being written. And some of them are on display today. We have. Um, Tofiq Rossi's graphic novel called Arab um, in America. And it's really his autobiography about his life um, as an Arab in America. And some of it is about the negative experiences that he's had. But the fact that we have that book on the shelf at this library and many of our local libraries and available for sale today, I think shows some progress. Um, Jack Shaheen's book, um, A is for Arab, which complements this exhibit, is also for sale up front. We have a discounted rate for students and, and um, staff in the community, so please check that out. And then we also have Leila Abdurazik's um, graphic novel up front as well, and, and we're excited about featuring those graphic novelists, Arab Americans, making a difference on, on November 17th um, here in the library. A uh, couple more things, you know, just as you walk around and, and look at the panels, and there's a little pamphlet that we handed you that, kind of, that complements that for you to take with you. Um, have discussions with your fellow classmates, Arab and non-Arab. Um, as was mentioned by Abdullah, I'm currently working on my dissertation on um, racial identity construction of Arab American college students. And what I've learned through my research is that Arab students really don't mind you asking questions. If you have questions about Arab culture 
or Islam, um, many times they just like to share and, and it really is, um, you know, okay in a, in a space, especially education, in an educational space like college, for you to get to know your fellow students and the, the students sitting next to you. And I'll, even if a question from a professor or staff member, fellow student, may be what students have told me somewhat ignorant, they in the end end up saying, I'm glad that they asked and I'm glad that they're making an effort to get to, to know me. <laughs> Abdul is endorsing that, right? Um, so again, you know, just don't hesitate to dialogue with each other, get to know each other, learn from each other, um, and learn from, um, from the other educators in the room here as well. The library ha at Moraine Valley has an excellent collection of positive um, DVDs and books, and some of them are on display, as well as Jack Shaheen's um, books. Some of the books, um, or the DVDs that were also featured here, Salt of the Sea, um, Slingshot Hip Hop, America, they're all available here in the library. So I encourage you to check those out. Um, a lot of them, again, are already on display. Pick them up. They're not just on display for you to look at. <laughs> they're on display for you to check them out. So we um, would like you to check them out and share them um, with other students as well. So if there's no other, yes, Suzanne. I would say in addition to what um, Nina is suggesting about interacting with your peers and not being afraid to ask them questions about what it means to be an Arab or what is, um, if you're an Arab and you're a Muslim, what is that like and what are some of the traditions and the customs because we are open, right, as Arab Americans to talk about these things and to dispel some of the myths and the stereotypes. I would say for the Arabs in the audience or even the non-Arabs, feel free to do your speeches in class about um, some of these topics, about your history, about your culture, your traditions, uh, the religion that you practice, and even for the non-Arabs. Maybe consider doing a paper on that in your sociology and your psychology classes to learn more and to share with each other about what it means to be an Arab living in America or what it means to be an international student coming to the States to study and what those experiences are like. Um, so I encourage you to talk to each other, um, use your class projects, your papers, the speeches you have to give um, to learn more and to share with each other. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? We also have a guest book um, that we encourage you to sign. It's at the Arab Student Union table up front. Any comments, questions, reflections that you may have, um, we'd like to uh, collect those from our um, fellow um, colleagues and from our students. So please stop by, if anything, just to write a note in the guest book, pick up some of the literature we have. And now I, I would like to um, invite you to walk around and take a look at each one of the panels. Please take the time to read what's on there and dialogue with your fellow classmates and, and colleagues. And this is really the, the feature event is the exhibit, not us speaking. So we really want you to take some time now to walk around and, and read the panels and, and get to know the exhibit a little bit. Uh, thank you all very much for coming.